What's going on everyone? It's Sean Mitchell, Denver real estate agent with Co-Listings, and I am here with my friend Jill Horch from Tribe Real Estate Group. Super excited to be here. You've got a listing here in Arapahoe Acres that I'm extremely excited to learn a lot about. We were sort of chatting uh, before we hit record, and some of the detail and thought in the design of this house is just remarkable. And so tell everyone who's watching a little bit about um, where this is located, address, and uh, some of the sort of unique features about it. Okay. Hi everybody, um, my name's Jill, and um, this home is in Arapahoe Acres, yes. uh, which is a historical landmark since 1998, and um, it's 1431 East Cornell Avenue, and um, it's called the Reed House. Mm -hmm. um, each house was in the Arapahoe Acres was named after the original owner, and um, it is one of the most iconic mid-century modern homes in Denver. Yes, agreed, beautiful. <laughs> um, we were talking about some of the uh, flow of the house, how easy it flows and how natural it feels. Like you, you, the, the windows are, are very mid-century modern, so you've got a lot of natural light coming in. Um, talk a little bit about some of the unique materials that were utilized in this particular house. Okay, so each house in Arapahoe Acres um, was um, it was developed by Hawkins and um, and Sternberg was the architect, and they specifically wanted to bring in you know some of the natural materials. Um, so you've got your brick, you've got your wood, you've got your concrete, and sort of play with them in a more sophisticated way, um, and to, so to sort of build on what um, Frank Lloyd Wright did um, with bringing the light, the outside in. And having the natural light, but then also having the natural features like wood and stone and concrete. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, and and the flooring here in this little li living room area is made of what? It's um, Armstrong cork, mm -hmm. and which is unique because and there's a there's a sort of a depth to the cork, and um, it's you know it's. This house is completely intact, yeah. and whereas modern cork, um, it's only you know it's not got the thickness, the thick layer. And, um, As, aside from aside from some of the, uh, the the kitchen countertop and the bathroom, it's very original. It's mm -hmm. been very extremely well preserved, which mm -hmm. is really special. And usually, when you get this sort of an older house, people want to come in and you know knock a few walls down and do a few. But but this has been really really well preserved. Mm -hmm. The 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 owner. Um, uh, this, this is the second owner, yes. correct? So not the original one, but the second one. So they've, they've done a really fantastic job at keeping a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. in the house. So Debbie Poole, um, we was, I always like to call her the matriarch of the um, neighborhood. Debbie Poole has been very um, just instrumental in preserving Arapahoe Acres and as a whole and just to keep the integrity of the design and steward in the neighborhood so we can pass it on to the next generation and she used her home as a really good example of that so for example some people would um, you know paint over a lot of the mahogany and she's actually preserved it's filipino mahogany mm -hmm. so it's um it you know you cannot buy yes. filipino mahogany right and and then there's a lot of built-ins in the house so you can really see you know the craftsmanship and intentionality that you know, Hawkins um, crew did for with the house. Yeah, I mean, if you're watching this video um, and you haven't yet been to Denver, we're seeing a lot of growth, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing a lot of people that are moving into Denver, migrating here, um, and one of the tendencies, especially in older neighborhoods, is to come in and just completely flatten mm -hmm. a home and build something that is modern, newer, but um, it sounds like the owner has been very intentional about making sure that this neighborhood in particular stays in its original intended style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, with this being such, um, this is one of the neighborhoods that um, a lot of people who are studying architecture, this is the neighborhood they study. They study Arapahoe Acres because of its pristine, um, you know, built. Mm -hmm. and, and also as well, which, you know, we might be able to show a little bit later on, each home was built in conversation with the other home with setbacks with its position into the sun to the mountains 
and and then also actually built into the landscape so the house is actually built into the hill and and then also Sternberg is very um, intentional about building the neighborhood around children so that they could um, go on their bikes and um, and actually sort of build it off the grid which was very unique mm. and so that's what I really think is very special about Arapaho Acres is just when you're walking around the neighborhood, you just sort of sense that magic. Yeah. In addition to to the the style and the architecture being really special in Arapaho Acres, you had mentioned something about it being kind of centered around the family and the children. Are there any any unique aspects of the community that um, play into that family friendliness? We are we still have things like neighborhood night out, and there's just there's just a really tight. Um, eclectic community here um, and that's what's really um, you know so it's the, the front lawns are shared there's like a shared lawn for the whole neighborhood which is very unique and um, and so then there's sort of your outside community everybody comes here walks their dogs and you know walks around and then but then you also have your like your privacy in your backyard so you've got that and you have that indoor outdoor kind of living space so it's sort of like you've got your community but also you have your privacy and that's what's, um, you know, just amazing. Yeah. The, uh, the backyard is something really, really special, I think, to this, to this house in particular. So um, talk a little bit about why it's so unique. So um, Yoshimura, um, Stanley Yoshimura um, is a Japanese um, um, garden designer and he built this garden, I think, in the 60s and he hand poured the concrete and then he built the whole garden to be like a small miniature landscape you know sort of have the essence of a Japanese garden so you have your mountains you have your fountain and then you have your your pond which is to be a reflection of a lake and sort of like a tabletop mountain and and it's been preserved today it's actually been um, kind of look, looked after by um, the gardener who did the botanical gardens so there's been master arborists and landscapers that have kept it intact. And, you know, I, I actually think it's one of the most unique gardens in the whole of Denver. It, it, you know, when you walk through the house, you've got a few access points to that backyard, but it really feels in, in line with a lot of the mid-century modern architecture where the inside is out and the outside mm -hmm. is in, so you can open up the sliding glass doors, mm -hmm. both in the dining room as well as the master bedroom, and you really get that serenity, that, mm -hmm. that serene feel mm -hmm. as the water is sort of cascading mm -hmm. down and into the into the pond, and you've got uh, a, quite a bit of privacy as well mm -hmm. with the large tree and, and, and fence. So anyone who ends up purchasing this house is probably going to appreciate that sort of indoor outdoor feeling i would suppose oh for, yeah i mean there's there's no way to sort of describe you know just that serenity and that harmonious feel unless you're actually here in the garden just sort of experiencing it it is um it's it's delightful the lot is is special in that it is a corner lot mm -hmm. so you do have you do have quite a quite a bit of room in terms of lot size. How does this one compare to other houses in the neighborhood? So this this one is actually sort of positioned. Um, so you've got two entrances, and you know have character pines all around outside, and um, you have this special panel in. It's like the Mondrian sort of style, and um, and it's sort of positioned so you actually can see the mountains through one side, and then see some of the larger homes. Um, behind you, one of them, which is um, Hawking built for himself, um, kind of based on the Japanese um, homes that he'd been visiting. Mm -hmm. Jill, uh, so you have a few listings in this in this neighborhood. How did you end up coming across this particular listing? So I actually live in Arapaho Acres. Um, my my husband and I actually, it was, we were, when my husband was in real estate, we actually got lost. <laughs> and then a realtor was sending us somewhere else yeah. and we got lost. and. We drove through this neighborhood accidentally, and we just said, "We have to. This is it. We, yeah. ha we have to live here. We ha we we don't have a choice." So we actually uh, we had a house in the mountains, and um, we um, decided to move down here. And at first, we actually rented, and then we purchased our house. So we live around the corner, and so um, living around the corner, um, I actually got to know the owner, Debbie Poole, and mm -hmm. um, 
and I just had a lot of respect for her and and I just felt like for me it would be an honor to steward her home and help her find the person who who would be uh, a buyer that would just fall in love with this place and the built-ins and just this home um, it's it is it is really special you know talking off camera I can really tell that you've sort of taken on this maybe not intentionally but taken on this mantle of of continuing this the stewardship of this neighborhood and making sure that it is preserved and and continued to stay as, as much as possible in its original state mm -hmm. so thank you for, for for doing that and I'm super excited that that our paths just sort of crossed Unintentionally, in fact, I don't even know how we ended up becoming Facebook friends. But um, <laughs> you you had posted the photos of of this this listing, and um, I had seen it before. It was on my radar. In fact, I had shared out the the post previously, maybe maybe when it when it first went on the market, and uh, you know, a couple of days ago, it was just sort of fanboying uh, on the photos that you had posted. So, and that's sort of how we sort of got connected and, and corresponded. And you invited me to come over, and I thought, hmm. I think I might be able to do one better and maybe do just a, a video where we've got, you know, the listing agent, you know, telling us a little bit about, about the uniqueness of this house. So I really appreciate the time. And, and if, if you've got some questions about this particular property or are interested in, in coming to take a look at it, my contact information will be down below. And then you can also add any questions that you might have in, in the comments. So thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Falling out the window, hit me back tomorrow. I'll always be the one to factor follow.